I'm Ginny Beyer. I'm a quilt maker, first and foremost. I'm also a shop owner. I've written several quilting books and I'm a fabric designer. And I hope today on this video to share some of my insights in terms of working with borders, a lot of other aspects of quilting. When I started quilting, I was living in India and I worked with Indian fabrics and all of the fabrics you buy by the piece, not by the yard, and they all had a border around the edge and I didn't want to waste the border so I learned at a very early in my quilting career to try to figure creative ways to use borders. When I came back to the States, I looked for fabrics with borders and there weren't any, or if there were, they weren't orchestrated in a way that we could really use them in quilting and I'll tell you about that. When I started designing fabrics then, I made sure that I had a border design in every one of the collections that I did. And I want to talk a little bit about those border designs to you here today. First of all, I try to have a narrow stripe and a wide stripe in each one. Now I mentioned fabrics with borders that are not designed by me. You'll find the borders right next to each other, like, like this stripe right here would be moved over where it didn't have the black space in between right next to this one. So when, if I wanted to use this, I would have to cut into this stripe to get the design, so I'm wasting a whole stripe. So as I design the borders, I always make sure that between the stripes, I have an area that can be at least a half an inch wide, so you can cut right down the middle of it to allow for the seam allowance, depending on you know, whichever border you want to use. You can use them both um, because I've got the seam allowance. Often that half inch in between the stripes is a solid color or maybe just a little bit of a texture, but sometimes, this would be the main stripe right here between my fingers. This part here would be the seam allowance. You cut right down there to the middle. And then this would be the wider stripe on the other side. So you see here we have the full width of one of the pieces of border print laid out in front of me. There are six repeats of the wider stripe and seven repeats of the narrower stripe. I always plan a border print to have at least four repeats of each of the stripes. That way you know you have one strip to go around each side of your quilt. So when you're estimating what kind of yardage you need to buy for your quilt, you only need to measure the long side of your quilt. And then I always add a half a yard to that to allow for the repeat of the design so that you can get the miters and um, designs to line up accordingly. The other thing I do with my borders is to have mirror image motifs. By mirror image, let me point out to you, this section right here is a mirror image. If I put it right down the middle of the mirror line, you see that the design is the same on either side. This particular border has a double mirror. So it's not only this mirror here, but I also have the mirror sideways like this. This narrow border that I have on here is what I call a double mirror. It's mirrored this way and this way. But not all borders are like that. For instance, this border uses both concepts. The little narrow stripe has the double mirror, both sideways like this and like this. But the big wider stripe only has the mirror going this direction, so it's a one directional. So that's a quick introduction to my border prints. There are differences in all of them, but they are all designed specifically for quilters.